Suddenly, in the distance, you would have heard a low rumble, growing louder and louder. Then you would have heard a loud explosion. 200 yards away from where you are, the first bomb fell on Fort Island. From right here, you would have witnessed the explosion of the battleship USS Arizona. World War II had come to Hawaii. On December 4, 1941, a Tokyo radio weather report was sent. Higashi no Kazeome. East wind rain. A signal that a storm was brewing and that in a few days the lives of the men and women of Pearl Harbor would be changed forever. Three days later, on December 7, 1941, in this very hangar, you would have been surrounded by a storm of flames and destruction. America experienced a surprise attack by the Empire of Japan, propelling the United States into mankind's bloodiest war and confronting the nation with an initial and devastating defeat. Japanese Navy pilot Senji Abe from the aircraft carrier Akagi participated in the attack, which would become the first of many battles in the Pacific War. Ford Island was at the center of the attack, within the eye of the storm. As bombs were raining down around him, 18-year-old radio operator Everett Hyland was aboard the battleship USS Pennsylvania. Uh, general quarters or battle stations were sounded, and uh, the fact that it was Sunday morning, I guess, uh, you know, you thought nothing of it. It's just it. Your battle station sound, you go to your battle station. It was obvious that we were under attack. There was no need for radio communication. The, the, the whole harbor was under attack. Although surprised, and shocked, brave American soldiers, Marines, and sailors began to fight back. Not only the military was surprised by the attackers, even a civilian plane in the skies over Pearl Harbor got into the middle of the action. Martin Vitusik was out flying with his dad. You can see the fires in Pearl Harbor and the ships burning and the confusion, uh, and the aircraft fire from the ships. Uh, the Japanese airplanes were almost all down on the ground in the initial part of the attack. They weren't up where we were. We were only 2,000 feet high, and we were all alone up there. After the attack, there was confusion and fear that the Japanese would return for another strike. James Daniels was a pilot on one of six planes launched from the carrier USS Enterprise. They tried to find the Japanese task force, but their enemy was long gone. When Daniels later tried to land in Pearl Harbor, he almost became a victim of the American confusion. <laughs> he got to the entrance to Pearl Harbor Channel, <clears throat> came down the channel, turned right around Hickam. We flew over the tower that you see here in the background and made our break to land. And at that moment, every gun, everybody that had a rod, every rifle, every pistol started shooting. The intense anti-aircraft fire was beyond, just, you just couldn't understand it. With Hawaii unprepared for such an attack, over 2,400 American souls had lost their lives. Although the American aircraft carriers were not in port and thus escaped destruction, the Japanese had crippled the battleship force of the U.S. Pacific Fleet 
as one of the potential threats to their own conquest of Asia. Japan continued an unbroken string of victories, and America desperately needed a quick and significant military success in order to re-establish morale and fighting spirit throughout the nation. A top-secret plan was developed to launch for the first time B-25 Army bombers from an aircraft carrier. Under the strong leadership of Lieutenant Colonel Jimmy D. 